In this video, I'll guide you on transforming your prompt to achieve a powerful result using stable diffusion. These principles work for other image generation tools too, but I'll specifically demonstrate them with stable diffusion. We'll begin with a straightforward prompt and enhance it gradually. So, let's get started. In my experience, a prompt should incorporate specific elements to produce a high-quality image. These include a subject, an artistic medium and style, the aesthetics of the image, and image quality. These elements collectively result in the following prompt formula. Artistic medium, adjective, subject, action or accessory, location, artistic style, aesthetics and image quality. In this formula, all the elements enclosed in angle brackets are optional. The arrangement of elements is flexible, which lets you tailor your prompt to align with the context or your personal style. Let's dive into the details. Our subject could be anything, from a person, to an object, an animal, a landscape, or an abstract idea. For this example, let's choose a woman. It's good to describe your subject, adding adjectives to our formula. In this case, let's say, the woman is captivating and she has long, dark hair. Next, define the type of image you desire. For instance, a hyper-realistic portrait. This covers the artistic medium part of our formula. Specify the setting, in a moonlit environment. This describes the location. Surrounded by a mysterious ambiance. This gives a sense of the desired mood. To ensure high image quality, include magic words like high quality, 8K, ultra HD, highly detailed. For this prompt, we haven't specified any particular action or accessory. Putting it all together, our prompt is ready. Now, let's have Stable Diffusion generate an image based on this prompt. The picture isn't good, it's blurry, the woman's face and hair look strange, and even her fingers seem twisted. Let's improve it. Before I make any alterations to the prompt, I'll reuse the image seed to ensure the base image remains unchanged. I won't dive too deeply into what the seed is, but basically, with the same seed, Stable Diffusion will produce an identical image if everything else stays the same. By keeping the seed constant throughout this video, I'm ensuring that only changes to my prompt affect the image. I'll also be keeping all the settings the same. People have debated whether commas influence image generation. While Stable Diffusion understands natural language, using commas as separators in your prompts is a good idea. Commas help Stable Diffusion distinguish which words belong together. For instance, putting a comma after long and after hair generates a different image. Adding a comma after dark also leads to a different image. My advice is to use commas in your sentence for clarity and because how you place them affects image generation. There's no strict rule on where to put commas. It often takes trial and error to find a good balance. I'm going with a variant of the prompt where I added commas after each part of my formula, after the adjective, the subject and so on. This is how my image looks now. It's still not great, but we'll fix that. Up till now, my prompt has been quite basic in describing the image. However, using descriptive language can significantly enhance your image. Employ vivid and expressive words to convey your vision and paint a clear picture. I often struggle with this, which is why I turn to tools like ChatGPT to help me create better prompts. It took some back and forth with ChatGPT, but I finally crafted a description I like. 
Instead of just with long dark hair, I'm going with with long dark hair falling in smooth soft waves on her shoulders. And instead of moonlit setting and with a mysterious ambiance, I'm opting for her features bathed in a soft diffused glow that accentuates the delicate nuances of her expression. The moonlight setting creates an alluring interplay that accentuates the enigmatic aura surrounding the woman. Now, let's generate our image. Well, stable diffusion improved my image, but I'm not satisfied yet, so let's try something else. The woman in the image has frizzy hair, which I dislike. Also, her eyes look strange and the overall image is still a bit blurry. You can use negative prompts to specify things you don't want in your image. So, I'll add frizzy hair, badly drawn eyes, blurry and other keywords to my negative prompts. I've also included words like twisted fingers and too many fingers. Because earlier, when we used commas in the positive prompts, Stable Diffusion generated some weird-looking hands. I'm hoping this will prevent it from happening again. Let's regenerate our image using this negative prompt. All right. This image looks good now, but I believe we can still do better. Weights for prompts are a way of controlling how much influence each word or phrase has on the image generation process. While it's not a sure thing, weights can help guide stable diffusion, pay more attention to certain words and pay less attention to others. The weighting system ranges from 0 to 2. 0 is the minimum weight and 2 is the maximum weight. If you go above 1, it boosts the importance of a phrase and going below 1 reduces its significance. Boosting means stable diffusion focuses more on the emphasized phrase, increasing the likelihood of it being generated. On the other hand, reducing emphasis means stable diffusion pays less attention to the de-emphasized phrase, lowering the chance of it being generated. You can group words or phrases with parentheses and assign weights to them like so. You're free to pick any number from 0 to 2 for the weight. Based on my own experience, going beyond 1.7 or below 0 0.5 can mess up the image. I want to highlight the words moonlight setting because the current image appears to be in daylight. Additionally, I'd like to emphasize hyper-realistic glow, and the magic words at the end of my prompt to enhance the image. On the negative prompt side, I want to underscore the badly drawn eyes to ensure they look better. Let's see how this affects the image. Adding weight to the moonlight scene worked a bit better, but now the woman in my image has grey hair which I need to fix. So, I'm adding weight to the phrase black hair, and to be safe, I'll also include the phrases white hair and grey hair in the negative prompt with additional weights. Let's see what happens. I like the colour of the woman's hair now, although I'm still not happy with the overall look of the image. It appears more like a drawing than a photograph. Let me add the words drawing and illustration to the negative prompt that hasn't changed the outcome much. So now I think I'll add the word photograph to the positive prompt for good measure. I like this image now. The eyes still don't look very good, but that's something you can fix using inpainting, which deserves its own video. I'll show you how to do that in one of my upcoming videos. However, there are still some things we can do today to improve the image. Picking the right model makes a big difference in your prompt. Until now, I've been using the base model for Stable Diffusion 1.5, which is from the first generation of Stable Diffusion models. 
If I switch to SDXL, the latest generation model for stable diffusion, the resulting image should be quite different. Let's give it a shot. Unfortunately, this image turned out really bad. But I think I know why. You see, Stable Diffusion version 1.5 was trained on images sized 512 by 512, which is what I've been using. But SDXL was trained on larger images, 1024 by 1024. That's why this image turned out not so great. So I need to increase the image dimensions. There you go, this image looks significantly different from the one generated with version 1.5. The image will undergo significant changes based on the model you choose, especially when using fine-tuned models that are specialized and trained on specific images. For instance, here's how my image appears with the DreamShaper V8 model. And this is the result with the Anything V3 model. So, always be mindful of the capabilities and limitations of the model you're working with. As for our most recent image, there's potential for further enhancements, but achieving them will require advanced techniques. I'll dive into those in my upcoming videos. Watching how others create images can teach you a lot. Take a dive into community talks, tutorials and shared examples to expand your grasp and improve how you make captivating images. I really like using Leonardo AI for learning new prompt words. It's my top pick for AI image generation. Visit the community page on Leonardo and you'll discover a bunch of generated images with their prompts for you to explore and reuse. If you want to know more about Leonardo, I'll leave you a link to my Leonardo YouTube playlist in the description. As you've probably gathered from this video, creating a high-quality image involves numerous iterations and plenty of experimentation. If your images don't look quite right on the first attempt, don't get discouraged. I hope this video has provided some insight into enhancing your prompts and taking your AI art to the next level. Stay tuned for more in-depth techniques and further exploration of stable diffusion in the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.